You're listening to Westchester Talk Radio, produced by Sharp Creative and made possible by our friends over at Entergy Indian Point Energy Center, where literally they are helping keep the lights on and will continue to do so as they support our community, as they always have, right through April 2021. Also, our friends at Lapolis Electric, where you're never left in the dark. They're doing a great job offering a 24-hour emergency service and are truly at the top of the COVID-19 pandemic with taking all precautions needed to provide a safe and healthy environment. Check out their podcast series called Live Wire, which is produced by Shark Creative and can be found on demand at lapolislectric.com. So today we are here with Rob Kistner, who is the president uh, of the digital art experience in Scarsdale. Uh, Rob, I've known you a long time, but it's a pleasure to see you today in your home makeup studio there. The beard is growing, um, <laughs> looking good in isolation, in which, by the way, we are here. Uh, this is Isolation Therapy episode number 16, so um, we want to welcome you to the episode today, and uh, it's a pleasure to see you. Well, it's a pleasure to see you as well, and I'm, I'm honored to be on this uh, episode 16. Very exciting. i um, definitely uh, got the hermit thing going yeah. on with my, my beard here. I'm, I'm embracing the, uh, the isolation for sure, but you know, I have my home set up here, and it hasn't uh, stopped me from, from keeping busy and, and uh, trying, to, trying to do our best to, to yeah. stay in business through this, you know? Yeah. You know, look, we, we, we caught up um, not that long ago uh, through a mutual friend, and I thought, you know, I, I actually love your setup. It's you're you're right in it, and it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense for what you're doing and the business that business that you are in. And I I thought it'd be a smart idea for us to do a little deeper dive on that, Rob. I mean, you guys do. Um, I know some things on the surface. Uh, you do some wonderful things in the Westchester community, um, and I know your history. I mean, so you, you've did some work for the Jonas Brothers, Duran Duran, Cat Williams, um, and many many other people. So I know you have a pretty interesting past. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are and, and how you got to being the president of um, the digital art experience. Uh, sure. Yeah. It's, it's a, a long story I'll condense, but essentially my uh, professional background before starting the DA was always in audio and music, hence, you know, the fancy microphone and all this is all the remnants of my recording studio life. But uh, at a young age, I was always interested in music, always interested in computers and video games. So it was natural that uh, I quickly became enamored with music technology uh, being in an basically elementary school, early middle school, you know, and as a guitar player, I played, you know, a bunch of different instruments and uh, was just enamored with being in the studio and using all these creative tools to create music. Uh, and at that point, there was no garage band, there wasn't laptops, even with wireless internet at that point. Um, so I didn't have the opportunity to do any of that at home. In fact, all I had was I got a, as a birthday present, a Fostex four track tape recorder, with, you know, a little cassette and one input and uh, I still have it and it still works. But that was my, you know, the, what sort of kicked this off. And, um, you know, all I had to, to have access and become immersed in this was recording magazines and, you know, reading what I could from those kinds of publications. Um, fast forward a short while, I was able to get myself an internship when I was in high school uh, at a recording studio in Manhattan. And my role was to sit in the corner and make coffee and run errands and not speak until I was spoken to first and all that sort of studio <laughs> politics stuff. Um, so, you know, while it was an amazing experience to be present for all these incredible recording sessions and see, you know, the, the process of recording music, you know, it wasn't quite the same as being able to start to learn how to use microphones and use equalizers and all that kind of stuff. Fast forward, I went to school for um, music production. It was, uh, I got a degree in media production with a focus on audio and radio. And um, it wasn't until my sophomore year of college that I got to start working actually in the studio and start putting my hands on some equipment. And, um, uh, you know, went through that program, graduated and uh, started working as a recording engineer, managed a studio on Long Island. Um, that was, uh, it was a pretty cool historical studio. It was built at the same time as Electric Lady in the city by the same studio designer. So it looked like a mini version of Jimi Hendrix's studio. It was originally Tommy Matola's studio that he used to um, Very cool. demo, demo artists in. So at any rate, w- did that for a while and, and uh, got out of the music business after the economic downturn. It just was challenging and uh, for a variety of reasons and, and kind of just trying to figure out what was next. And 
uh, the DAE came out of that experience. I was commiserating with a very, very close friend of mine who I've known my entire life, who as a young kid didn't have access to the things that he was passionate about. It was always things like welding and these kind of like more dangerous forms of art that they really couldn't do in school. And for me, it was music technology. And it kind of got the wheels turning. Well, why isn't there a place where kids at a young age can experiment with professional level tools and technology and be exposed to all these really cool things? And that was really the birth of, of the idea of the digital arts experience. And it's evolved. And wh when was that? When, when? So we officially opened in 2012. The, the idea came about more like 2010, but it took about two mm -hmm. years to get that, that up and running. So. Well, congratulations to you, Rob, for, for having that foresight and, and to be able to, to follow a dream, really. And you clearly are very passionate about what you do. I know we've had you on a couple of times, if, if not once or twice, um, at, at, a, at an event. And I know you're active with the community, which we love to see. Um, tell us a little bit about how, you know, let's bring it in, let's reel it into the COVID-19 situation. And how has it affected business? Well, uh, we've been closed. We've been closed since we were mandated to close. Um, you know, uh, when this first started coming about, we were hoping to, to uh, continue to have our, our classes run, but obviously the situation changed and got much more uh, urgent. Um, so we closed and being an after school program and uh, summer camp in person, that obviously became a challenge and it affected us in two ways because we run programs at our facility on Central Ave in Scarsdale, but in addition, we have contracts with schools all over the county where we go and provide the PTA run after school programs Monday to Friday. And, you know, we would see four or 500 kids a week, wow. you know, at schools all over the county and all the schools closed and we were forced to close. So our operation completely shut down as a result of that. Um, which, you know, at first was obviously very troubling and challenging, but once you sort of digest that and, and, and approach the situation objectively, um, you know, we started to get a little creative and adapt to the situation. And uh, we have been busy for the last few weeks in, in a variety of different ways. So it, it was- tell, it was us a, about, tell us about that. I know you, you've, ha you've had to innovate. We keep talking about this on isolation therapy, how, you know, you need to- sort of bite into a different approach, right? You need to pivot. You need to find how, you know, how can you solve a problem given the problem that you're currently in? Tell us, tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. Well, so the one thing I will say is we, given what we do and so much of what we do is based on software, you know, teaching 3D printing and computer programming, game design and all that kind of thing. It was just a natural fit for us to go to teaching online classes and it required very little adjustment, qu quite honestly. Um, you know, most of the software we use is open source and free. So our students can download it at home and use it or it's web-based and free. Um, so you know, we were able to, uh, right off the bat, start spinning up some of the classes that we would do as online workshops. And to kick that off, we did single session workshops where kids can come in for 90 minutes and learn how to code something in Python or learn how to 3D model something in Tinkercad or whatever the case may be, because we figured the students are starting to adapt to uh, distance learning through school and parents are working from home. It was such a stressful situation. So we just did one shot single run workshops, which have been um, quite busy. The other thing for us is the whole idea of being isolated is challenging for everyone. And so much of what we do is based on collaboration and interaction between the students and the instructors. So we started doing these collaborative gaming sessions. You know, it's an hour every day. We have uh, between, you know, five and six kids come into our private Minecraft server and we all build something together. And it's a way to interact. Uh, you know, we charge five bucks a head for that. So it wasn't even really a revenue generating thing. It was really just a way for all of us, including our instructors and myself, to be having fun and interacting with other people people in a creative way. And I think that was really needed. I think people were starting to go a little stir crazy and the levels of stress were really high, both related to just being home and having to learn in school from a distance, which was new for everybody. So we said, you know what, let's just have some fun. And we're not even going to make it about learning. We're going to make it about being creative and working together. And it's, that's been really cool. It's been really, really fun. Yeah. I think most, most businesses have to find that um, that happy medium between combining where your business is going to go with how do you make it fun for, for staff and, and how do you keep some sanity? I mean, it's really, uh, you know, look, we're, we're faced with some incredible challenges right now. Um, so it's, what do they say? It's not about how you fall, but it's how you get up from the fall that really matters. And so um, seeing you do some of these exciting things is, is only going to prove to be um, helpful. 
as time goes on. Um, I do want to uh, remind our listeners, you're listening to Westchester Talk Radio, um, produced by Shark Creative, and we also want to send a special shout out to our friends on the front lines everywhere in the community, particularly at White Plains Hospital, um, where they produce their own podcast series called Health Talk, uh, which you can find on their website at whiteplainshospital.org. Uh, again, I'm here with Rob Kistner, who is the president, founder of the Digital Arts Experience located on Central Avenue in Scarsdale. Rob, um, tell us a little bit more about how the customers of yours have been reacting to some of these changes. And and um, if you could also just address, I mean, you, have you had to let some of the staff go too? Uh, so I, I haven't had to let anybody go. I mean, we had a downturn in work. Um, you know, I have a core staff, administrative staff of me and three others. And then I have my instructor team of about, I think about 12 to 15 at the moment. And some of them, they're all part time. Some of them, you know, we're only teaching one or two classes a week as is. So we had a period of time where I had no uh, hours for them. But uh, as we've ramped up the online classes and the gaming sessions, we've started to ramp that up. And I've been able to keep the good majority of my instructors um, working, which has been really important because the special sauce for the DA is the people. It's our instructors. I mean, anybody can teach the things that we teach, but the way that we deliver it and the experience we provide for the kids is the biggest difference. So it was uh, of the utmost importance for me to, to apply for all the loans that were available and, and see if we can spin up some work. And as a result, I, I, I have not had to let anybody go, which has been really, really nice. Um, and on, on the customer side of it, you know, it was a, a little slow to, to ramp up at first, I think, because everybody was just trying to, you know, figure out what to do. But, um, you know, our, our community has been very engaged through the variety of different things that we're offering. Um, we've had a really nice cohort of kids hanging out in our workshops and the gaming sessions. And uh, the, the parents have sent us emails and said that they appreciate the, the, really the interaction. That's, that's the, the main part of it. It's just something fun that their kids get to do. They get to learn something, they get to make something, they get to have a little fun. And we've gotten some really positive feedback about that. In addition to that, we're doing a lot on YouTube. We're releasing a lot of uh, really cool content every day of the week. We do these create and hang sessions where one of the DA instructors will live stream working on any project related to some of the classes that we offer. And we'll have students come and hang out and chime in and ask questions and that kind of thing, which has been really fun. Um, the other thing we just started that's been really great is we do the DAE challenge of the week where every Monday we release a video uh, announcing the challenge and then the kids have a week to come up with their project that fits the challenge. They submit it by Thursday and then the admin team at the DA live streams going through the, the winners uh, or going through each submission and then we pick a winner and we have some, some cool prizes. So uh, the biggest thing for us is just trying to keep them engaged, trying to keep them yeah. involved and keep them kind of distracted from how stressful and you know unknown everything is right now. And, I mean, it sounds like you've come up with a lot of ways to develop these positive changes during this this tough little transition. So uh, again, hats off to you. Hats off to the hard work. Um, you're, you're already doing plenty of things to keep people upbeat and positive, and I think you know that. Um, and, and look, that that part is contagious. So uh, you know, maybe that's such a great word to use right now. But we do want to we do want to stress the fact that you got to stay positive, and um, and and you're doing everything you can to do that. So. Um, I look forward to, to keeping tabs on you, Rob. Um, maybe more to come between the two of us, and I and we'll um, we'll, we'll just let that rest for the moment. But um, I'm really glad that we caught up. I'm glad that we got a chance to share this experience together, and um, I wish you nothing but the best uh, in the coming weeks, the coming months, and you know every day going forward. Um, so again, Rob Kistner, the president. CEO or founder of Digital Arts Experience. Um, I also want to thank our friends at Hightower Westchester, where they're willing to help, always curious, go the extra mile, and won't give up. Um, look for their pad podcast series that we also produce. You can find that at hightoweradvisors.com forward slash team forward slash West, uh, Westchester. Westchester Talk Radio, produced by Shark Creative. Uh, you're listening to Isolation Therapy. This is episode number 16. We'll be back with more Isolation Therapy. Thank you very much, Rob. Great to see you. Thanks so much, Andrew. Really appreciate it. You got it.